number two, Nicole Morin. In the summer of 1985, Nicole Morin was eight years old and she was living with her parents in a penthouse in an apartment building in the Toronto, Ontario neighborhood of Etobicoke. On the morning of July 30th, Nicole put on her favorite bathing suit and sandals and said goodbye to her mother. She was going downstairs to the lobby to meet her friend to go swimming at the building's outdoor pool. The friend waited for Nicole for 15 minutes in the lobby, but Nicole never showed up. So her friend called her apartment on the intercom and Nicole's mother, Jeanette, said that Nicole had already left for the pool. The friend waited for a few more minutes and then she just figured Nicole couldn't come swimming for some reason, so she just went to the pool by herself. Hours later, when Nicole didn't return home, Jeanette knew something was wrong. The building was searched, but Nicole was nowhere to be found. The police were called and it led to one of the biggest and most exhaustive searches in Canadian history. But sadly, not a single trace of Nicole has ever been found. It was as if she slipped through a crack in reality once she left her apartment. But of course, that isn't what happened. Nicole had been kidnapped, but by who? No one saw Nicole after she walked out of her apartment door, so it's not clear if she was kidnapped on her floor or on the elevator. What is known is that she did not make it to the lobby where her friend was waiting. The kidnapper could have been someone who was visiting the apartment building, like a guest or a maintenance person, and she was taken out of the building right away. But no one saw anything suspicious, like someone carrying Nicole out of the building. Another possibility is that she was kidnapped by someone who lived in the building, quite possibly on her floor. Both theories are just as plausible, but the police have no evidence to back up either. A woman was seen on Nicole's floor about 45 minutes before she disappeared. She was on the opposite end of the hall from the Morin's penthouse and she was holding a notepad. She was described as a white woman, about 35 years old, 5'5 five five to 5'7, five and she was slender with a fair complexion. She was wearing a white skirt with a black design and a white or cream blouse. The police don't think that she was involved in the kidnapping, but she may have witnessed something. A month after Nicole disappeared, Jeanette said that she felt in her heart that her daughter had been killed. Nicole's father, Art, says that he hopes that Nicole is still alive. He says that he still has hope because Nicole wasn't the only child that Jeanette had go missing. She had a son from a previous marriage and his father kidnapped him. Then, one day out of the blue, after being missing for 15 years, her son surprised her by knocking on her front door. Sadly, Jeanette never found out the fate of the second child she had go missing. She died of a heart attack in 2007. 29 years after Nicole went missing, the police announced that they were reopening the case. Not long afterwards, a tip came in and the police were told to search a rural property in the township of Springwater, Ontario, which is about an hour north of Toronto. This was the second time the police received a tip to search that area. The police had searched that area in 1985 because an anonymous phone call led them there. Both times that the area was searched, the police didn't turn up any evidence that Nicole's remains were there. The police and Nicole's father are hoping that one day Nicole will be found and they are all praying that when she is found, that she is still alive. If Nicole is still alive, then she is 43 years old at the time of this video.